So, number two, okay, what, what is the other reason why ourselves get emotionally upset and feel negative and spread negativity? Or why is it that other people do the same? And number two is, it's because of falsity. It's because of our illusions, which is a word for believing in the false. It's like, I look at this tree and I say, this is a pony. Or, this tree is out to get me. This tree is being rude. How often do we project and falsely assume or falsely identify somebody as doing something to us or being something that we call negative and we judge, we have a problem with that. So, this number two, the second reason is false beliefs. As Bashar, a wise and brilliant channel says, you cannot have an emotion without a belief. So there's two fundamental beliefs if you break it down to the very root. And that is if you believe something to be positive or negative, good or bad. So if we imagine we always believe somebody was being positive to us or good. If we had this belief, no matter what they were doing, <laughs> we'd be like, all right, this is pretty good. It's like, I'm happy with this. So we wouldn't be suffering or we wouldn't be getting angry at them or taking stuff out of them because we view them to be good. <laughs> Alternatively, imagine we viewed everyone or any, anyone, everyone to be always being negative, hurtful, out to get me, trying to be mean, trying to take advantage of me, lying to me, trying to abuse me, trying to hurt me, <laughs> uh, not listening to us, like just things that we're persecuting, resisting, resenting and judging to be bad and negative and wrong and that they shouldn't be this way and they're supposed to be another way because this is the psychology of it then obviously we're going to be always annoyed at them or angry or frustrated. We're going to embody negativity and we're going to take out negativity and spread negativity with them. So these are the two extremes. If it's always viewing and believing it to be a positive thing or always believing something to be a negative thing, our perspective and our viewpoint, either always positive or always negative. Okay, so that's how we'd have two dramatically different realities for two different people, even if it's the same... Even if they're joined at the hip, <laughs> so they experience the exact same things, but one of them would experience a totally different life than the other. So, this is where there's a quotate, perception creates reality. So, so in real life, it's never just we're always viewing, believing something to be positive or negative. It's a mixture. But the, the problem comes in when we b falsely start believing People or things are negative when really they are not. That's when we suffer and that's where the illusion is. The illusion of bad, wrong shouldn't be negative. But in actuality, in actual fact, it's either neutral or it's even positive. So can you see how this can create suffering and negativity in us? And another way I'd like to describe, literally describe negativity, is an absence of our true nature absence of love, feeling, being and spreading behaviorally love. So when we are like this, negative or not love, obviously we act not loving then and we act neg negatively. So the thing is, even if someone else is being negative, even if someone is being mean or mean intentions or literally intending to or have the motive to, to be mean or unfriendly or unkind or even abusive, at the higher level we still do not need to go to that level and judge and persecute within our heart we do not need to be negative. We ultimately, absolutely do not need to suffer, be negative, diverge from love, um, or, or lose our peace. At least the more we grow in this, the less and less and less and less and less. And that's been the way it has been absolutely in my life. Absolutely growing in this path big time. Growing. So... I'm not obviously saying I've mastered everything or mastered this, I haven't, but I've become better than the way I was before, which is what we all want to do. We don't want to compare ourselves to other people. 
in, 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 in in any non rational sense, like in a judgmental or ego sense. It's okay to compare this tree to that little tree and say, this is bigger than that. But you don't want to go around smug and arrogant, hey, I'm bigger than you. Because <laughs> that's not what the spiritual journey is about. No, it's not about being better than anyone. Nobody's better than anybody. We're just like different levels of maturity and growth. And we have different journeys, so it's meant to be this way. Nothing goes wrong in life. Nothing has gone wrong. And a good quotation or an affirmation for you to say when this, when this hard thing's happening is, nothing has, has gone wrong here. Nothing is going Wrong. Nothing has gone wrong here. It's a good way to soothe ourselves from our subconscious and innate judgment. So, without the initial judgment that something is bad, wrong, negative, or shouldn't be, well, with, without the judgment that something is negative or bad, then that brings the judgment that it shouldn't be or that it's wrong. Like, so wrong and shouldn't be come from perceiving it to be bad, um, bad or negative. So. Let's say I say that person is bad and negative. <laughs> then from this perspective I'm going to say it's wrong to be bad and negative and you shouldn't be bad and negative. So this is the judgment. Whereas if I say they're good and they're positive, it's a, or this situation is good. Um, okay, I, um, I got delayed by 10 minutes for my interview, um, but maybe it's not bad or negative. Maybe it's actually good and positive. So now, I won't be saying this shouldn't have happened. This this is a, this is wrong that this happened. I'll be more like saying, okay, it's kind of right. I trust the universe. It's okay. So the judgment it's supposed to be different shouldn't be, or it's wrong comes from our original judgment calling something bad or negative, like bad or negative. So. Trying to like dodge the wind here with this tree. <laughs> so I hope this video is being helpful, and um, you might want to listen to it twice or not. You might need to want to or need to. So, so in real life now, I want to get back to real life. Like, how does this apply in our real life in relationships? So hopefully now you'll be less likely to judge the God or the the life or all that is, source, great spirit, or the universe as be making mistakes and being wrong and the things things are like shouldn't be and they're they're fundamentally essentially at the core bad or negative. Now there's a difference between unwanted or unprepared and bad or negative in the ultimate sense of the entire universe. For example, World War II catapulted the consciousness of this planet up because we deeply experience what we don't want, the darkest levels. And from this, a sprout bloom saying, we want this, we want, we want peace, we want diff something different in this negativity and pain and hurt. We want collective unity, we want familyhood, we want caring, we want sharing, we want working together. We want kindness, compassion, peace, love, generosity. But without experiencing the heaviness and the pain and the darkness, the collective consciousness wouldn't have shot forth so quick. So this is what I mean. Obviously we don't want or prefer or like. We don't like, let's say, like or enjoy or prefer pain. But on the ultimate bigger scheme of things, the things serve. So, you know, they often say like our hardest experiences turn out to be the best experiences of our life. So this is the point I'm making with this. Don't judge the messenger. Don't judge the experience too hastily or at all. Look for the deeper good and pray for the higher good for yourself in life. When you're hard, when you're, when you're in hard times, difficult relationships, when you've had losses, when things have happened that are hard and challenging. Ask and pray to your guides and your angel or your angels who are looking out for you and dare to protect you. I hear an angel is assigned to you or assigned themselves to you at the beginning of your life in this physical form to look after you, to protect you and to help aid and guide and assist you. So they do love gratitude and appreciation and pray to them and give them love and gratitude and ask for, for their continued help and support. And that's what I do in my life. It's helpful, it's beneficial and it's connective to that angel and loving being that's being good to you and you don't want to take that for granted. At least I don't. So, okay, so letting go of the initial judgment. What 
what you can do after that is bless the person, the situation you're in. Bless them. Even in the moment when someone's like taking out projections or triggers on you, being angry or whatever, judgmental of you, persecuting you, judging you, see if you can avoid your own reaction of negativity and non-love and see if you, and I don't mean just be a walkover, but see if you can emotionally, emotionally, inwardly see if you can keep your peace and love, that's my goal and objective, and fight to bless them or the person, the situation. And try not to add fuel to the fire, of course, too. Try not to make them worse if they're already um, reactive and lost in reactivity. Um, love and wisdom come hand in hand to a degree. Because if you're unwise, you end up being unloving, which is producing a negative result um, by just being a bit unwise. Um, let me see. So regarding our judgments, just to wrap up the video. Sometimes let's say somebody, um, so regarding the number two reason, okay, it's like um, falsehood, belief, false beliefs. Like let's say you take somebody up as being, being disrespectful <laughs> or smart and they're actually not. So your job now, guys, your job, our job, my job, if you want, to, if you want it to be your job, your job is to look at yourself, take responsibility for your emotions, say to yourself, my, response, my emotions are mine. You aren't responsible for my emotions. I'm not blaming you. You can say this inwardly or to, actually to somebody if you feel like it. So set yourself free from being dependent on other people and outer situations that make you feel a certain way, that are responsible for your well-being, happiness, peace or love in life. So obviously things will get to us, but our job is to try let go of the blocks, let go of the falsehood, be humble, see and recognize our mistakes or our illusions, our false beliefs, our false beliefs, extremely important. And what I'd recommend is thework.com, the work by Byron Katie, that's what it's called, the work. It's a very good way of delving into your, yourself and your psyche to understand yourself and your projections and how you're making yourself suffer from your mind and your thoughts and your beliefs. So, um, look within, do inner work, look, question yourself, take responsibility. Don't be blaming or criticizing others for your emotions. And once you do this, you won't be giving out to people because you won't be thinking that they're making you annoyed and upset anymore. Instead, you're the one being triggered. So instead of taking out your triggers and others, look within, grow up, mature, and take responsibility, and grow, grow and mature. In gratitude for the trees, the wind, the leaves, the roots, the branches, the flowers, the rocks, the air and the sky, and Mother Nature, overall, Mother Earth, 